how do you put together a plot hook? You've already made a game, and now the players are coming up with stuff that has nothing to do with what you presented and what you all agreed upon. Well, today, we're going to discuss that here on PlayerBase. I'm GR, and this is a channel about ludology, which is a fancy way of saying the study of the dynamics of play. And the dynamics of play when it comes to a tabletop role-playing game and the story that the person who is running the game, the GM or the DM, has put together, and the interests, whether they're conscious or unconscious, of the players can sometimes come into uh, a non-mutually agreed upon field, which is to say there's some disconnect and conflict, and how do you work that out? Well, it's actually very simple. The hard part, if you're neurodivergent, is paying attention to nonverbal cues. And in this case, nonverbal and very often non-visual cues, because people are stating in the second person what their characters are doing. And that can take some training. Just paying attention to it is really enough. And even if you do it not so well, a poor job is better done than a job not done at all. So in that spirit, let me tell you how I go about doing this. Let's say you've got a group of players who are members of the militia of the local lord, and they're sent out on patrol. Say they're going into a forest and they find a hermit's hut who has a codex, which proves that the local lord is actually not the legitimate heir to the local barony. Well, watching how your players respond gives you real simple clues on to where they're at with this. You know, I've seen maybe half a dozen times a TikTok video of a guy driving in a car explaining how to solve the problem of when your spouse doesn't want to know what to order for dinner, you go, hey, guess where we're going? And whenever they excitedly respond, you say, yep, that's where we're going. And that's basically what this is. When they come to the table and they respond to whatever you bring them, even if you've agreed that this is what you're bringing them, and usually you have, you look for what their responses are, especially the ones that they don't know that they're bringing. And however excitedly they spin off on what you've presented, all you really have to do is present what you've presented within the color palette or the cloak or the framework of whatever it is that they want, even especially when they don't know. So let's say you have one player who kind of excitedly responds in an off-color way, which suggests that the idea of overthrowing the local lord and instituting some type of anarcho-syndicalist collective is really exciting to them. Well, then you just tell them it just so happens that the wizard's robes are red and black, which are the anarcho-syndicalist colors. And, uh, you know, you uh, take it from there. And the fact is, as simple as this sounds, it's something that even I omit doing uh, on more than two occasions. The tricky part is really just paying attention. The thing itself is actually really easy to do once you keep it in your mind's eye. Now, the way that I go about doing that when I'm playing with people is I become really well attuned to what it is that they're not saying. And I don't necessarily have good ears for that, pun intended. It's something that I have to work on. And so when I'm presenting this to you, I can tell you this is actually a big challenge for me, even though it's probably not going to be as big of a challenge for you. But even for me, who has serious limitations where this is concerned, being autistic, I got to tell you, it's doable. And really, all it takes is the willingness to listen to what they're saying, even when they're not saying it. Because very often, you know, like we said yesterday, they're kind of just grasping at their unspoken desires to themselves. And when you cloak whatever you bring them within the context or the palette of their unspoken or half vocalized desires, they become engaged in whatever it is that you have. So you don't necessarily have to rewrite a whole story off the cuff. You can. It's fun. That's actually easier for me to do than paying attention to those nonverbal cues. But it's not necessary. And if you have a very, you know, if it takes you a long time to put stuff together and you have a certain thing and you don't want to get flustered, all you really have to do is take whatever responses they're bringing to you and then couch whatever you have within the context of those responses. 
let's say they're loyalists and they really want to defend their local lord. Well, then, you know, you say, well, the wizard goes, ah, you know, well, uh, yeah, it would really destabilize the kingdom and blah, blah, blah. And then you put him on your side. You don't have to, but the purpose of the example is to give you a framework to show you how you can take whatever they're giving you and in terms of where their emotional inertia or momentum is and putting whatever you have along that roll. It's like they're showing you what lane they're in. You just got to throw the ball down that lane. It's a big bowling alley to stretch this uh, metaphor out. And that's really it. Now, if that made sense to you, let me know. And if it didn't, I'd love to hear about that too, down in the comments. But for now, we are going to sign off. I'm GR, this is Player Basic. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about how to put a game together for adolescents. What do they need? Thanks.